Hello everyone, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you as always for being here on the channel, for your always thoughtful and kind comments and just chatting movies with me. I'm really excited for the movie I am watching tonight. I have been wanting to watch this movie ever since the very first movie I watched for the channel, which was Shawshank Redemption. I asked if this was Morgan Freeman's breakout role and I was told many times that I need to watch Glory, an early movie of his that was really, really incredible. So I've been wanting to watch this one for a long time. I thought doing it in February during Black History Month would be a good fit. The only things I know about this are it's about the Civil War and that Denzel Washington and Morgan Freeman are in it. I have loved everything that either of those actors have been in. I admitted in my Dances with Wolves reaction that I remembered very little from what I learned about the Civil War growing up. I am from Canada. We still did learn about it, I just didn't recall much, except like the main, the North versus the South, slavery, Abraham Lincoln, etc. But since then, since Dances with Wolves, I've done some reading and watched some things on my own. So I feel like I'm a little more prepared for this, but still have lots to learn and excited to see what angle this is. I actually don't know if this is a true story. Like, obviously the Civil War is true, but if this is like based on a real human, we'll see. Remember, if you like this video, will you click that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell if you want to see when new content comes out weekly, tri-weekly. And if you want to check out my Patreon for perks, all the perks, you can check that out here. Okay. Robert Gould Shaw was 23 years old when he enlisted to fight in the war between the states. He wrote home regularly telling his parents a life in the gathering army of the Potomac. These letters are collected in the library of Harvard University. Okay, that sounded like it is based on a true story. Whoa! some powerful music already. Dear mother, I hope you are keeping well and not worrying too much about me. Is that Matthew Broderick? This time, we must make it a whole country for all who live here. Before this war began, many of my regiment had never seen a Negro. Now the roads are choked with the dispossessed. We fight for men and women whose poetry is not yet written. Wow, he's so eloquent. You would think it strange to see me giving orders to a hundred men. Thank you for sending my volume of Emerson. A deep man, he says, believes that the evil eye can wither and that love can overcome all odds. <sighs> Your son, Robert. Oh, let's not start with a battle this soon. I don't want to. Why are they walking so slow? Oh. They're not firing? Oh. They just keep watching for Oh, I thought that was him. I'm so confused by this fighting style. Cam. His voice. It's hard to believe for me that it's the same country fighting each other, but then at the same time it's not. Hard to believe. Right, Captain? Shootings are all busy, but I'll fix you. The latest, Lincoln's gonna issue an Emancipation Proclamation. Gonna free the slaves. Emancipation Proclamation. I remember that. Oh my gosh. So the slaves weren't free at this point yet, even in the northern states? Captain Shaw. I was so proud when I heard. All the other officers are dead. <laughs> and Forbes? He's around here somewhere. How about you? Working for your father. There's a shortage of housing. <laughs> Robert? Yes. Sorry. He's back home? Governor Andrew. 
Robert, have you met Frederick Douglass? Frederick Douglass. I read his book. The governor is proposing to raise a regiment of Negro soldiers. Pride, dignity. Those who have known only degradation. I've submitted your name, Robert. It's a wonderful idea. Excuse me. Does he not want to go back to war? <gasps> Wesley. What's the matter, Chester? Too much punch? <laughs> regiment you know how popular that would be i'm gonna do it you're not serious i want you to come with me rob is it true so it seems then i am your first volunteer i didn't realize black men couldn't be soldiers either <laughs> all volunteering does he remember him good morning gentlemen i am your commanding officer it is my hope that the same courage spirit and honor which has brought us together, will one day restore this union. May God bless us all. Name Searle. Tom Searle. Jump to the shop. What about that book? It's a collection of essays, actually. All the times in death place. You got pictures? No. Yes, I'd be happy. They need the suits. That's my faith. Boy, if you don't mind, I prefer a space with more sufficient reading light. Oh, I like it when you talk good as white folk. I'd be happy to teach you. I ain't got nothing to learn from no house here. I am a free man. Well, why don't you move your free black ass on out my space? Hold up there, but Ain't nobody said nothing to you, pap. It's all right. Hey, would you put that? He brings his drum into the tent. What's your name, what? Can't you see that he's mute? Don't even feel like me. Bitch. He's a pot stirrer, isn't he? Ran away when I was 12 years old. I ain't never looked back. Well, what you doing since then? I run for president. I ain't win, though. <laughs> you know Charlie Moore. Charlie? Charlie. How was your meal? The remoulade was a trifle tart. <laughs> but this flavor dessert more than made up for it. Major Forbes, a word, please. Yes, Robert. I won't permit that kind of fraternization. It's only Thomas. He's an enlisted man. Robert is by the book. I've sent for help. These men need a proper teacher. You are ugly Mexican, African f***ing whore! I don't understand why all your trainers right. need to be so mean. How many here do not know right from left? Every movie I see, they're so mean. This is our right, and this... Now you're learning, boy old. Forward, march! You can be tough without being degrading, right? Why is the bloody prince of Africa? Stop fighting! The men learn very quickly. They are almost grave and sedate under instruction, and they restrain themselves. Oh, that's heartbreaking. But the moment they are dismissed from drill, you would not know from the sound of it that this is an army camp. They must have had to learn this from long hours of meaningless and inhuman work. To set their minds free so quickly, it gives them great energy. Look, he's helping him march, and he's helping him read. Oh my goodness! They've done it. They've done what? The Confederate Congress has issued a proclamation. Any Negro taken in arms against the Confederacy will immediately be returned to a state of slavery. Any Negro taken in federal uniform will be put to death. Any white officer in command of Negro troops shall likewise be put to death. Full discharges will be granted in the morning to all those who apply. Okay, so the Confederate Army said that... They're not here in the morning. I understand. The Confederate Army said that if a black man is fighting with a gun and gets caught, he'll be put back into slavery, and if he's wearing the uniform, he'll be killed. And any white leader of black soldiers will also be killed. Is he practicing? Good morning, Major. Formed and ready, sir. He stayed. How many are left? Oh, it all stayed. Be nice, be nice. Sergeant Major, I wonder if you are treating these men too hard. The boy's your friend, is he? We grew up together, yes. Let him grow up some more. Are these their supplies? I can knock something down with this. Do that again. One down, kid. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Look at his smile. You're a good shot, Private. Squirrel well, button. <laughs> Reload. Faster. That's a process. Faster! 
Discharge your weapon. Discharge your weapon. Do it! Now do it again, only this time, quickly. A good man can fire three shots in a minute. You used to do that every time? Give me a cult revolver. Faster! Do it! He's going! Do it! I know he's trying to simulate what it will be like. Teach them properly, Major. That exercise would require a lot of watermelon. Morning, Major. You wouldn't mind getting down from your horse. I feel like that was literally and figuratively. Why do you treat the men this way, Robin? How should I treat them? Like men? I'm getting these men ready for battle. They're already as good as the seventh ever was. They march well. Well, thanks to you. I beg your pardon. Oh. You heard me. Who do you think you are? He stayed with Acting you. Acting the high up colonel. They have risked their lives to be here. They have given up their freedom. I owe them as much as they have given. I owe them my freedom. My life, if necessary. I think Robert respects them as men. He's trying to get them ready. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what have we here to do? Now stab me. Come on, stab, not tickle. And a worse soldier in this whole company now in me. Ah. <laughs> Oh, shame, son. Get up. Forgot to duck, that's all. Sergeant, hey. deal with that man. Robert, I might speak to you for a moment in private. Oh, Thomas. Enlisted men wishing to speak to their commanding officer must first get permission. Thomas! <laughs> he thought he was different, didn't he? What you going to cry? I think he's had enough for today. It's palmy, but two, three miles from there. Don't even think about it. Maybe give myself some real shoes? They find out they're liable to shoot you. Wait a second. That's because of his shoes? Dear Mother, news today of the defeat at Fredericksburg. I wonder if I might not end my days as an outlaw leader of fugitive slaves. Try as I may, I don't know these men, their music, their camaraderie. I don't want to stand in their way because of my own weakness. I miss Christmas on the Sean Island and the smell of the sea. He looks so young to be in charge. Merry Christmas, Robert. Merry Christmas, Thomas. So at this point, he said in that letter that the North is losing battles right now, right? How's it going down there? I hear they're deserting ahead of the time. No. Oh, you're misinformed. I think they never had it so good. And they gotta know that nobody's gonna let them fight. Why wouldn't you let them fight? Yes, of course. If there's anything you need, a bottle for the cold nights. Actually, I put in a requisition for some shoes. I'm afraid that kind of item has to be reserved for those units who supersede you. You understand, I'm sure. Excuse me. Nice meeting you, Sean. Good job, Sean. Good. We caught a deserter. I thought they're allowed to desert. He was just going to get shoes, wasn't he? Yeah, don't go around shooting, mister. Robert will understand. What is this? The prisoner is to be flogged before the entire regiment. Not the way. Not a man. Never question my authority in front of others. Ugh. I is sorry. Stand at attention! I don't know, Robert. You may commence. Please, no. <gasps> Proceed. Oh my gosh, look at his back! How many times? Stop! Oh my gosh. Boy was off trying to find himself some shoes, Colonel. He wants to fight, same as the rest of us. More even. All of the men like this? Most of them. <sighs> you change your mind about that bottle I was talking about? You want 600 pair of shoes and 1,200 pair of socks and anything else you've been holding out on us. Piece of rat filth. We just don't have any. They need shoes. You really think you can keep Union soldiers without proper shoes because you think it's funny? <laughs> shoes and socks. They need socks. Are they going by size? some yes a doctor cream oh my gosh oh my gosh keep me informed
I'm really proud of him for getting them shoes and socks. Anything can be done. Protest this through channels later on. You men enlisted in this regiment on the understanding that you would be paid $13 a month. This morning I have been notified that since you are a colored regiment, you will be paid $10 a month. Fall out by company to receive pay. Where you going, boy? $10, a lot of money. Are you finna lay down for this one? He should have said, I don't agree with this, and we're gonna protest it. Yeah, well, Uncle Ed got himself a real bargain here. It's a slave way. What are they saying? What's he gonna do? If you men will take no pay, then none of us will. That's how you are a leader. Week. A million loyal readers want to know what happens when the men of the 54th see action. Well, you'll want to see this. Attention! This regiment was formed with the promise that only white officers would be commissioned to lead it. Nothing was mentioned, however, about non-commissioned officers. You are hereby awarded the rank of Sergeant Major. Congratulations. I love him. Hip, hip! Hooray! I ain't sure I'm wanting this. <laughs> know exactly how you feel. <laughs> At least he's honest. Oh my gosh, this is <sighs> so cute. Meet Colonel Montgomery, the brigade commander. I'm hiking a company over to the Georgia coast in the morning. I could use a hand. That is, if you think your men are up to it. And Marge Hanson, like any my compliments, we owned a few ourselves, so it comes naturally to me. Oh. Oh. You are from Boston, are you not? It is impossible to imagine Boston with slaves. Go Boston. Ain't no real there, just some women. Can you hear that, boys? Let's clear her out! <laughs> Shoot now. I don't see why not. Go ahead. What in the world? What kind of regiment are you running? You really think anybody's gonna put these boys into some real combat? If you don't treat them with respect. I mean, they're little children, you. for God's sake. Oh they're my little monkey children. And you just gotta know how to control them. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Take your hands off the white lady. <laughs> you see, secesh has got to be swept away by the hand of God, like the Jews of old. Oh my gosh. Tell your men to set torches and fire the buildings. Don't. I will not. Thank you. What? Are... Tomorrow, Lord, I am not bound to obey. Explain that at your court martial. Oh my gosh, I hate that guy. your men are placed under my command. No. Never. Never. <sighs> Prepare to fire the town. Nice woman fedora. I think he should be court martialed. It was hard to watch. Dear father, I need your help. It has become clear that we are to be used only for manual labor. I have written to Governor Andrew, but I feel that only a letter directly from you to Lincoln himself can have the desired effect. I can think of no other course. Someday they're gonna let the 54 get into it, and all your trouble to be over. Huh? Them men dying up that road. It wouldn't be nothing but webs dying if they let the 54 in it. Listen. Nope, nope, nope. Let's not. Then you are. You men move on. Stripes on a like tits on a bull. You! What's your name? I'm putting you up on charge. Hey, ain't no calls for that, sir. Just a soldier's fight, sir. All right, you may move along. Go, we'll see you again. Oh my gosh. 
They're fighting with you, for you, for unity. Yeah, button up that collar. Tucking them big black lips. I don't have to listen to this. Let me buy. Let you buy? Let's not fight each other. You can march like the white man. You can even wear a suit. But you ain't never gonna be nothing to him but an ugly ass chimp in a blue suit. You don't like that, do you? Why does he want to fight? <laughs> Get your hands off me, Greg. Does the whole world got a stump in your face? You ain't nothing but the white man's dog. What are you? You've been whipped and chased by hounds. Well, that might not be living, but it's true as hell ain't dying. And that's what these white boys been doing for going on three years now. Time for you, fool. I know, because I dug the graves. Oh my Time's coming when we're going to have to ante up and kick in like men. Then it goes right here. You. You ain't careful. That's all you ever going to be. It's hard because they want to fight, right? And I want them to be respected enough to be able to fight, but I also don't want them to get hurt. What can I do for you? You can give me and my regiment a transfer to combat command. Couldn't do it. Much too valuable to my operations here. Oh my gosh. Further manual labor? Ooh. Yes, I've become quite a student of your operations in this region. 34 mansions pillaged and burnt. 4,000 bales of cotton with payment to parties unknown. Confiscated valuables shipped north. Oh my gosh. They're just raiding the mansions? I can report you to the War Department. Don't back down. Don't back down. Let you take your regiment out to fight. He's so pompous and condescending. I can't even stand it. Are they going into battle right now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jealous. He'll be back in Boston before me, sitting by the fire. I'm not going back. That's me. He wants to keep fighting. We was turned back in Pennsylvania, Gettysburg. My God. I know, looks like it'll all be over by Christmas. Any casualties? 42. 42? That seems like a lot. Every person that dies, just like they said in Unforgiven, you take everything they had and everything they ever would have. Sergeant Rollins has recommended that you receive a commendation, and I think you should bear the regimental colors. Why not? Wanted to say something, sir, but I... Go ahead. I ain't fighting this war for you, sir. I see. I mean, what's the point? Ain't nobody gonna win. Somebody's gonna win. Who? I mean, you, you get to go on back to Boston, big house and all that. What about us? What do we get? Well, you won't get anything if we lose. Stinks, I suppose. <laughs> Stinks bad. And we all covered up in it, too. I mean, ain't nobody clean. Be nice to get clean, though. How do we do that? We ain't up and kick in, sir. But I still don't want to carry a flag. No one will ever take Charleston without Fort Wagner. We will proceed with a direct frontal assault tomorrow at dusk. The ocean and the marsh leave only a narrow strip of sand to which we can only send one regiment at a time. 54th Massachusetts, Westiana, are leading the attack on Fort Wagner. You and your men haven't slept for two days. There's more to fighting than rest, sir. There's character. There's strength of heart. Oh my goodness. You should have seen us in action two days ago. We were a sight to see. We'll be ready, sir. The way he believes in them is like... <sighs> they should get some sleep, though. No, 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 no. Tomorrow, we go into battle. Let me fight with the rifle in one hand, good, good book in the other. Yeah. You, blessed Jesus, are with me, and I have no fear. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. I really 
really scared for them. I'll run off and left all my youngins and my kinfolk in bondage. And tomorrow we have to meet the judgment day. Our uh, Heavenly Father, we want you to let our folks know that we went down, turned it up. They are going to be the best fighters. They have the heart. This is the best regiment. Speech. 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 Never had no family. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're doing fine. Oh my gosh. Um, oh. Y'all the only family I got. I love the 54. Oh my gosh. Ain't much a matter what happens tomorrow, but we men ain't. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh my goodness, how outnumbered are they? Please end happy. I mean, it's just gonna break my heart if any of these guys die. Do something for me. This is the writer. Certainly, Carl. If I should fall, remember what you see here. You better relieve part to the rear of stretcher bearers. Oh, what? <gasps> you go on. We be back directly. <sighs> They're friends now. Start fighting. If this man should fall, who will lift the flag and carry on? I will. <sighs> I'll see you in the fort, Thomas. Be safe, please. Big Spanish! Dodge Spanish! They know they're coming? I thought they were gonna have the element of surprise. I can't take this. No, 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 no. This is 
stopped it. They stopped the cannons on the ridge, right? Does that mean they lost? They didn't take the fort? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Did any one survive? Lost over half its number. The fort was never taken. As word of the bravery strike, Congress at last authorized the raising of black troops throughout the Union. 180,000 volunteered! President Lincoln credited these men of color with helping turn the tide of the war. Oh. Hey guys, so very unfortunately, the original outro, I don't even know if that's a word, the microphone somehow got unplugged it's just muted you can see me crying but cannot hear a word I say so I'm going to try my best to recap it it's hard because it's not as fresh and obviously I'm not as emotional as I was right after I finished it but I thought it was so so good and so well done and so important and so eye-opening for me I did not realize and I said this in the reaction, I did not realize that black men couldn't fight in the Civil War or be part of the armed forces, which is so hard for me to grasp because why wouldn't they want more men on their side? And I, I think it's because they didn't see them as a man, a full man, which is just heartbreakingly disgusting because you have these super brave men who were willing to fight with you, for you, die for their country. And instead we just wanted them to do manual labor. There were a couple scenes in there that were just so impactful and emotional. Obviously when he was getting whipped. And all he was going to do was to try and find a pair of shoes and the tears He's trying to stay so strong and he's looking Shaw right in the eye. That was tough. When Shaw goes forward in the final battle and then Trip comes behind him and picks up the flag, even though he said he didn't want to, but then he did. Oh my gosh. That was like so powerful. And then the night before the battle, when they were singing and praying, the look on all of their faces and when Morgan Freeman's character said his prayer and then when Denzel Washington Tripp got up there he could hardly get it out and everyone was being so like you could do it and then you saw Thomas finally give in and start singing and I think he finally felt unified with them I at first was really unsure about Robert and it was interesting to see him grappling with his feelings and beliefs and and he wasn't supposed to be like this like amazing general I don't think he was just this young guy he was trying to figure it out too and got it wrong lots but to see the difference between his army and that other horrible guys company the way he believed in them and respected them versus how the other guy treated him, treated his company. You could see in the way they respected themselves and in just their uh, confidence in what they were doing. And it was special to see him really believe in his guys and get off his horse and fight beside them. I also think I kind of answered my own question in why you have to be so hard and intense during training. I don't think you have to be mean and rude, but I know you have to be very hard in that type of training in order to prepare them for the real thing. Overall, I thought it was excellent. One of those ones that was just so impactful that I will not forget and makes me even more curious to go learn about how historically accurate that was and 
more about that time in the Civil War and the impact that all of that had on the outcome. Okay, I'm sorry, the whole audio mishap happened, but thank you so much for watching along with me. I'll see you again soon.